So we are here in Savi Row 13 on the first floor at Banshee of Savi Row and I have Ruby with me. Thank you for having me Ruby. Thank Hello. you for coming in. My pleasure. <laughs> I, I'm so excited about um, this brand and of course because it's a female brand, uh, the first uh, tailoring on Savi Row, women tailoring. Yeah, we're the first bespoke tailoring house for women on Savile Row. We've yeah. been here for almost four years, which is really exciting, but I've worked on Savile Row for almost a decade. Mm -hmm. Of course, <laughs> yeah. so you, you are a little bit aware of the neighborhood. And yeah, would you say that is uh, mainly or oriented or dominated or is easy for a woman to be involved in Savile Row? Uh, it, a lot has been changing. When I first started working on Savile Row, there was literally nothing for women. And yes. it was really hard for a woman to even get a pattern cut, you know, because I think the male tailoring houses saw women is difficult to tailor for and now luckily there's there's a few more female tailors around like yes. myself so it's kind of it's made a difference and women are more welcome and now some of the men's companies now make for women so yeah. it, a lot has changed since when I first came here. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the element that uh, uh, women tailors bring along in this sartorial world different from the men aspect? I think for female tailoring is a lot more about breaking rules and turning tailoring on its head, yeah. uh, which I love. We, we don't have to stick to the same rules that apply with men's wear. And, you know, I had a client in this morning and I made her a velvet smoking jacket and she's wearing it to wear on stage. But she went, oh, I love this. I can also wear it with jeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, whereas a man would never do that. So it, it, we can have a lot more fun experimenting mm -hmm. with within the parameters of what you can do in, on Savile Row, which is quite exciting. So you would say that we will bring this boldness uh, in, on Savile Row, but also in general on sartorial world. As a woman designer, as a female designer, would you think that we would bring, you could bring something more uh, bold in this industry, something more forward? Like something yeah, more? well, it's about, for me, combining fashion and tailoring and not yeah. making them one or the other, that yeah. you can be both. Fantastic, the yeah. balance, you bring the balance. Yeah. So how easy was your uh, beginning on Savile Row? How easy was to start having your own brand here? How easy was for other tailors and brands to accept you? Were they very friendly? Were they supportive? I was very lucky because I already knew a lot of people on Savile Row. Yeah. So I had some wonderful connections with the cutters, with the makers, yeah, with yeah, yeah. different tailoring houses. So I was really lucky from that perspective. Um, but sometimes some of the designs that I would have um, and the way I would use fabrics, people would go, Ruby, you can't do that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know I like to use silk lining in um, my work, as you can see here. This is your signature, the same yeah. patch. Um, yeah, yeah. which they all thought I was crazy for doing and then you know some of the combinations you know I've just done a tweed tuxedo when they kind of even now after, yeah, yeah. after this point they kind of went well that's quite cutting edge yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah those things I've come against but otherwise yeah. you now I've been really well supported that's amazing to hear very yeah. good yeah I think there is enough space for women to get involved in this industry and we can see the last five years the last ten years more and more women are getting involved, which is fantastic to, and very optimistic for the future, of course. Uh, but I would like to understand a little bit more about your brand. What are your signature uh, touch you bring along with the suit, with the dresses? What is the thing you would like women to be more involved and um, affiliated with your brand? Um, I think having a piece of clothing that fits you yeah. i think that's the starting point for women because yeah. we're all different shapes and sizes i think even more so than men we've got curves yeah um so for a lot of women when they see the final piece and they actually see that it fits properly they can get quite emotional you know having a pair of trousers that fits is quite a big deal you know for me personally i can't buy trousers on the high street mm -hmm. because of my i'm quite short in height and i get other women who are really tall so that's a huge factor of you know what I'm providing and especially with bespoke tailoring because we do so many different fittings yeah. from the 12 stage to the final fitting to all the alterations mm -mm. and then you know having fun with the design is is always going to be I think women before have generally when they come in they go I've only ever had my wedding dress made I've never actually thought about having other clothes made yeah so for them it's quite when they see all the different fabric options and what they can do it's, it's really exciting crazy it's yeah. amazing um do you think we have any differences in the principles of sartorial cutting like with in, 
comparison, of course, with men. Are there any different principles in terms of uh, the shirts, the cut, uh, the color, or any other uh, principles that we used to have seen in uh, men's clothes and they're different with women? Uh, well, yeah, yeah our, 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 yeah. Our, our blocks, our patterns are yeah. completely different. Our construction is slightly different. We yeah. don't, for example, we don't use as much horse hair canvas inside our jackets for women uh, mm. just to give it a, a lighter feel yeah and um, so it's not as heavy here we still use a horse hair canvas but yeah. just on a smaller scale so the pattern of that is changed to so the construction yes the pattern is different mm. um a lighter touch i use a lighter canvas in the waistband than you would say in a men's pair of trousers yes, of so there are you know gentle things like, yeah. like that that make a difference yeah, yeah. I was always uh, wondering if the tie is different in the women's knot or in men's. Is it different for the knot? No, uh, no I have I have a lot of clients uh, <laughs> who love wearing ties. Yeah, they'll yeah, go to exactly. Drake's to buy their ties, yeah, for example, yeah. um, and they'll the they like wearing them in the classic menswear. Yeah, and they you know if they want to wear a pocket square, they'll look at all the different menswear ways of doing it because I think women also love menswear and I think yeah, even yeah. some yeah. men are beginning yeah. to like women's wear so yeah. <laughs> exactly so um in terms of your icons uh what would you like to dress uh from the iconic figures of Hollywood have you thought about it if it's alive or not um I is representing as the proper ambassador for Banshee if you're talking yeah. about the past Someone like Catherine Hepburn has always been, yeah. you know, constantly on my mood board just for her way of wearing a suit, I always thought was wonderful. Yeah. In today, somebody like Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I think she's such a banshee yes. and I love how she wears a suit. She rocks it. Fantastic. Yeah. And I, I'd like to know uh, about your future plans now. I, I know that you did the um, London Fashion Week uh, show um, a few days ago and it was yeah. fantastic. Tell us a little bit more about it. How you uh, collaborate with London Fashion Week and what's your future plans? Uh, well, the British Fashion Council have been very supportive of Banshee since we started. I think they love the sustainability yeah. of Savile Row um, and the fact that I'm trying to bring the world of fashion and tailoring together. So they've been a great support. It was my second year showing at London Fashion Week, wow. um, which was great. We shot a film which yeah. was shot between London and Ireland, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And I did a salon presentation of the collection uh, here. Like the old times, which is amazing. Yeah, I wanted it to be a nod to the kind of 1950s Parisian salon. Yeah. And uh, we've just launched our made to order coats on our website because our coats uh, like here are yeah, kind we of- We have to show them because- Yeah. yeah absolutely. A statement coats. I think every woman needs a really good coat in her yeah. life. Um, and we are about to go to America. We're doing our first trunk show in America in New York, LA and Chicago next month. And we're doing a fashion show in the Museum of Modern Art in Chicago next wow. month as well, on the 27th of October. News, right? So yeah, so we've brand. got a lot going on. Yeah, quite busy, <laughs> keeping you busy. Very busy, yes. <laughs> and are you <clears throat> planning to be at PT for next PT? Oh yeah, I love yeah. going to Pitti, it's yeah. so much fun, yeah, getting dressed up, seeing everybody. It's, it's crazy, it's <laughs> yeah. nice working, seeing your familiar faces, beautiful. Yeah. So you have to be updated regarding uh, Banshee because she's going to be around the world having her trunk shows. And before we close this uh, amazing interview, I would like you to tell me the three statement pieces that someone needs to start with Banshee. Ooh, I, that's mm -hmm. a difficult question. I would say... Mm -hmm. If you're starting out with Banshee, I think you need one suit that you can wear sort of all the time. Yeah. Uh, for me, a black suit is sort of a starting point. Well, and it, the cloth will be kind of depending on what feels right for you. Yeah. It, it could be a black tuxedo. It could be a black corduroy suit. It could be a plain black suit. I call it the killer black suit. Mm -hmm. So I think every woman needs a black suit in her wardrobe that she can interchange yes. and wear with everything that she owns. Then I would, the next suit I would have would be something in a really bright color that's a favorite color of yours, you know, whether it's a yeah. red suit or a green suit or, you know, something really fun that mm -hmm. expresses you. Um, and the third thing would be a coat because I think every woman needs a banshee coat. Our yes. coats are, you know, I, I love them. We do them in cashmere, we do them in tweed, we 
you know. The cut is amazing. Yeah. It's beautiful. The design, honestly, they're beautiful. I think they complement a lot. Either it is a solid girl or a tall like girl. Like yes. us, yeah. <laughs> mini version. <laughs> but I think they are complementing a lot. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. Before I get one last question, uh, I would like to know how would you imagine me uh, in a bunch of sh uh, suit? Is this the, the, the suit you imagine myself or the style? I mean, I think you're quite a fun person to design for, so I, I would have I would have fun creating something for you. You said to me that you quite like the oversized jacket, yes. which is why this one's really good on you. Yeah. Um, I think a slightly wider leg trouser is also really elegant on you as well. I think we could have a lot of fun though with you know tu tuxedos yeah. are really good on you. You know, and bright colors. Yeah. I think yeah. I love this suit honestly, and it's a three piece suit. You will see. Uh, later we're going to show you some uh, shots from the rest of the collection but thank you so much for having me today i look thank forward you. for your next uh, plans and uh, ho hopefully i'm going to see you in future again you will indeed thank you for coming in thank you thank you <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs>